Hello, dear friends. May God bless you all. May the Holy Spirit, the Helper, may He come to comfort, to console, to strengthen the hearts, I mean the souls of all those who have been keeping their faith strong in the Lord Jesus Christ, His Son. May God bless you who have been going through a difficult moment, a very difficult moment in your life, a tribulation that is almost unbearable. However, you cannot forget that it is written that we must go through many tribulations in order to enter the kingdom of God. We will face many tribulations, many tribulations, but all of them are going to be forgotten sooner or later. And then we shall enter the kingdom of God. <laughs> we go through many problems, tribulations. But when we read this here, this is too strong. The apostle says like this, strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying, we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. The truth is the following. Yesterday, we were saying that there is a difference between believing and acknowledging. When a person believes, they go until the end, until the end they receive the crown of life. But when they just acknowledge, they don't go until the end. They go to a certain point. Let me tell you a very interesting story. They said that there was a very famous tightrope walker and he had a very close friend. They were very close. And he said to his friend, look, friend, I want to break my record. I want to surpass myself. I want to do something much greater than I've done so far. And I've decided, I've decided to cross from one mountain to another. There's a huge abyss in a very long rope. But this time I won't use a stick to walk on the rope to balance myself. Instead of having such stick, I'm going to cross with a wheelbarrow and I'm going to cross the abyss on the rope. And then his friend said, yes, very good. Go ahead. Go ahead. I believe in you. Go that you are going to, to make it. And obviously, you are going to receive even greater glory. And his friend encouraged him and encouraged him emphatically. And then he scheduled the day that he was going to, to cross the mountains on the rope and so on. And on the day, there was a multitude of people. A multitude of people got together. And they were all very apprehensive because indeed it was something very challenging to do. Then he turned to the crowd and said, look everybody, I want to tell you that I'm sure that I'm going to be able to cross from one mountain to another on the rope because this is an assurance that I have. And his friend was like, yes, that's it. So, by the way, I have here my good friend, he's very close to me, 
and he's been motivating me all these years for me to go through with this project here especially and to prove to you all that he is my friend and that he believes in what I'm doing then I invited him to come here and here before you all I want to call him to sit on the wheelbarrow because I'm gonna be crossing the rope pushing him in the wheelbarrow. When he said that, his friend said, no way, no way, go by yourself. His friend believed in him, but in the moment of such a great challenge, he melted. And this is how faith is, dear friends. This is how faith is. What matters is that we will enter the kingdom of God through many tribulations and disappointments, tribulations, because this is the law of faith. Those who believe won't melt away. Those who believe won't fear. Those who believe are not afraid. They go forward. They go ahead because they know whom they have believed. When we know, we know whom we have believed, then we won't melt before the tribulations. This is the great reality. When a person just acknowledges his existence, it's not faith, it's not trust, there's no conviction, then, in the moment of tribulation, they melt. They go backwards. That's the reality. And we must, we must, meaning this is necessary, that through many tribulations, many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. That we may take possession of God's kingdom. Remember that Jesus said that the kingdom of God is taken by force and only the violent, right? The kingdom of God is taken by force and only the violent, those who go against themselves, will take possession of it. The apostle directed by the Holy Spirit, said, not only that, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. We have to glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. Perseverance. It's a virtue that those who believe indeed have, those who don't believe, they don't have it. Tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character. Character. This means this character of faith. The experiences that we, we have through faith are necessary in order for us to grow and mature in our faith. We don't mature in faith with biblical knowledge. You don't mature by hearing my live broadcasts and messages. No. Having a vast knowledge of the Word of God. No. You only mature over the time, the years, when you go through tribulations and deserts and difficulties, then you will learn the value of faith, this belief that is intelligent. You are going to learn the value of believing. And when a person gets discouraged, is because they only acknowledged God's existence, but they didn't believe. So, you who are watching me right now, 
who are going through many tribulations and struggles, disappointments, you are acquiring experiences. You are going through difficult moments, but it won't kill you. You won't die because of that. You, you suffer. We suffer. We groan. However, we also mature through these tribulations. We then become experienced. We gain experience. And experience brings hope. It's what is written here. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. We glory, we rejoice in them. Those who have the Holy Spirit feel the pain on one side, but they also have the comfort, His comfort inside of them. And that's what we are going through. And not only that, but we also rejoice, we glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, hope. Now, it, it's nice because the tribulations produces perseverance. Those who are new in the faith are not patient, they don't persevere. I remember this when I was a, a teenager. I wanted at all costs, and I, I thought that the faith I had was to make things happen quickly. That's the truth, and I made many mistakes because of that, because of my lack of perseverance. But over the years, the experiences, the disappointments, the tribulations, the persecutions, remember, you know the persecutions that I've been through, the defamations, lies. Well, at that time you thought it was all true, but now you know that it wasn't. You know that it was all fake news. However, I was the one who would suffer, I would groan. However, not only myself, actually, Esther, I, my family, all the people of the church at the time. So it says that tribulation produces perseverance. I've learned to be perseverant. I've learned to be patient. But I learned this over the years. It wasn't out of the blue. It wasn't because I had the Holy Spirit that I automatically was patient and had experience and hope. No, no, not at all. I had to go through, you know, the process. I had to go through the Red Sea and the desert, the struggles. So these things add up they adapt to our faith, maturity. So when you who are right now being tribulated, going through struggles, because of your faith, here, these tribulations, biblically speaking, tribulations are provoked because of faith, because of our belief in Jesus. It's not because you you know Jesus exists and all. A person who only acknowledges his existence, when they go through problems, they melt. But when a person believes in Jesus, they surrender their life, they die for themselves, they die for the world, then this person remains. Why? Because they have a solid belief, a solid faith. They are grounded rooted in the Word of God. It's not just in a thought, an ideology. They are rooted in the Word, in God Himself. In the Holy Spirit, those who have the Holy Spirit, have His help, His comfort in that moment of tribulation. You know, when, 
When a son has problems, a daughter has a problem, then the father comes, the mother comes and says, Come here, my child, sit down. You know, I am here with you. Count on my help. Be at peace because I, I won't leave you alone. I will not abandon you. Count on me. So that's how God is. He gives us this assurance in moments of tribulations, struggles, and, and fight those difficult moments that you feel like crying. You feel like weeping. You are looking for a friendly shoulder to cry on. The Holy Spirit is the one that comforts you. Because this is His role. This is His role, is to comfort, is to console, is to motivate our faith. And that's what He's doing with you who are going through tribulations. Praise God. Then He says, repeating here, and knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance Perseverance produces character, and character is valuable. Valuable. And, and character brings hope. Now, hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Do you remember? that the, the Apostle John, used by the Holy Spirit himself, said, He who loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Do you remember? Well, those who do not love the world, these ones have the love of the Father. They have the Holy Spirit within them, which is the love of the Father. Isn't it nice? It is very nice. The love of the Father is the Holy Spirit. So, whoever has the Holy Spirit has the love of the Father. Those who don't, they don't have His love. They are empty. And that's why we've been insisting. We are emphasizing this. You have to receive the Holy Spirit. You have to have the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, you won't resist. You won't stand the tribulations. There are many. The devil works and plays dirty. He's a dirty player. But God is greater. God is greater than all tribulations and problems. So, let's remain strong through the tribulations. Let us remain in this faith. Because God's love is in us. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit yet, then put all of your strength, all of your life, it's worth you denying yourself, denying the world. It's worth it turning your back on everything and everyone in order for you to receive the Holy Spirit. It's worth participating in the fast of Daniel from the 11th of March now. On the 11th of March, Monday, the second Monday of this month. We will then start the fast of Daniel for, for you to receive the Holy Spirit. So you are going to disconnect from the world, from news. You are going to disconnect from everything. Of course, if you have to study, you will study. If you have to work and, and it involves news, then you have to, to do it. You won't stop working and living your life, your day-to-day -day life in the sense of, of work. But in the sense of entertainment, you are going to turn your back on it all, to be thinking as much as possible in receiving the Spirit of God. From the 11th of March, we are going to be in this faith with you, together in one faith, in one spirit, agreeing with you. But each one has to do their own fast. Okay? Don't forget then, the disciples of Jesus were exhorted to remain in the faith. They were in the faith. They believed. They didn't just acknowledge His existence, but they believed in Him. And they were exhorted that through many tribulations, we must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. That's how it is with us. 
May God bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and praise God.